This video was made possible by Wix. If you're ready to create a website, head over to wix.com slash go slash infographics to try out one of their premium plans right now. The killing of a monarch is called regicide. It's not something that happens in modern times, but in the past quite a few royals were murdered or executed. Take Charles I of England for instance, who said an unjust sentence that I suffered to take effect is punished now by an unjust sentence on me, right before he put his head on the block. Then you get Henry VI who was murdered while he was staying at England's worst lodgings, the Tower of London. Or what about Alexander of Greece, who for all intents and purposes was murdered by a monkey? But it's not often you hear about common folks getting close enough to fell a monarch. Today, we'll find out why in this episode of The Infographic Show. How much protection does the royal family get? It goes without saying that monarchs are heavily guarded and don't take the risk of rubbing shoulders with the hoi polloi. You don't hear about Queen Elizabeth popping down to the shops for a loaf of bread and a packet of Marlboro Lights. It's not likely that these days the British public would get rankled enough to demand the Queen's head, but there are likely a few anti-royal people out there. So she has a security detail. In fact, in 2017, the Queen's former security expressed concern that her present security system had changed. Scotland Yard had begun implementing a rotation system, and that meant the Queen would be seeing many different men around her. One of the guys responsible for looking into the late Princess Diana said, Understanding the behaviors of the person you are charged with protecting is crucial. Understanding the machinations of the royal household is very important too. But how much protection do these royals usually get? Well, you might see the queen surrounded by soldiers. That are what's called the queen's guard. While every tourist likes to get a picture with these guys, they can sometimes be seen wearing what looks like a bear's backside on their head, a busby. They are not just there for show. They actually do protect the queen. These guys stand at their post and make sure no one can get to the queen or any other royals. That wasn't the case in 1982 when a guy got to the queen's bedroom, but it was there that he was intercepted by the police. The cops over in London have a branch they call the Royalty and Specialist Protection Service. These guys look like regular security with dark sunglasses and a black suit and tie. A website called Elite UK Forces tells us that men in this service stay around when the queen is at home and they follow her and any other member of the British royal family when they travel abroad. It's said that they are highly trained. They're experts in one-on-one -on -one combat, and if they don't fight with their fists, they may end up using their 9mm Glock 17 pistol. Before the royals go anywhere, these guys will have secured the area and done their reconnaissance. As we said, there are not too many people out there who want the blood of royals, but in modern times, there have been some close scrapes. In 1981, a kid in New Zealand tried to take out the queen with a gun when she was visiting. He missed with his shot, and it was kept secret at the time. The Guardian wrote, the queen had just stepped out of a Rolls Royce to greet 3,500 well-wishers when a distinctive crack rang out across the grassy reserve. Cops got a hold of him, and during an interrogation, he told them he had been ordered to do the hit by a mysterious character called the Snowman. Yes, he was crazy, and sent to a psychiatric facility. He later decided he also wanted to kill her son, Prince Charles, and then while in prison he took his own life. He was awaiting trial for murder and kidnapping. When asked about his famous assassination attempt, he said, Damn, I missed. Had he been a better shot, Britain may have lost its queen and many questions would have been asked about her security detail. It seems the British royals had a fair few enemies in that part of the world. In Australia in 1994, a young man by the name of David Kang attempted to assassinate Prince Charles. Well, not quite. The guy rushed toward the stage where Charles was standing and fired not a real gun but a starter pistol, twice. He was then pushed to the ground by the New South Wales Premier John Fay and Australian of the Year Ian Kiernan. Charles was shielded by his security. The man got just 500 hours of community service. He now works as a barrister, so he didn't do too badly. We guess security is a bit tighter these days. When the royals go abroad these days, they are protected by the special escort group. The armed men will surround a motorcade that is carrying one or more of the royals. They will also be somewhere in the crowd. We're told the goal of the SEG outriders is to enable the VIP convoy to keep moving thereby avoiding presenting a stationary target to would-be attackers, while causing minimal disruption to the public. There's also a guy who gets to have the cool-sounding job of Easy Rider. 
This is the person that rides a motorcycle in front of the convoy. It's said that the motorcycle security guys usually ride Honda VFR 1200s. They carry handguns, but also sometimes MP5 SF2 carbine guns. One of these men crashed in 2014 when Prince Harry was being taken in a Range Rover to the Invictus Games. The Daily Mail wrote the driver acting in line with his anti-terrorism training expertly steered through the damaged vehicles at speed before coming to a stop several hundred feet along the road. But it wasn't an attack, just an unfortunate crash. Simon Morgan, who worked as security for the Royals for many years, told the British press that the protection was mostly about knowing what's going on around you. You must have the eye of an eagle, a super awareness. That's what the protection officer is thinking when the principal gets out, meets and greets the host, waves to fans or the press. You have thought of everything that might happen during that simple walk of two or three yards, Morgan said. He also said that it's mentally draining, especially when the royal is walking around close to where hundreds of people are waving. You're looking at hands, you're looking at eye contact, you're looking at the dress. It's very relevant at times like this when we are dealing with suicide bomber type scenarios. Why has someone got a very heavy winter coat on on a lovely summer's day, he said. To get into this position, you'll have to take a lot of courses. You might learn how to be a response driver, an anti-hijack driver, an armored car driver. Obviously, you get lots of firearms training. But as we said, learning situational awareness is a big part of the training. He added that even though under their smart suits they're packing powerful handguns, they don't want to be a show of force. Instead, they meld in. When he worked there, he said there were 107 officers protecting the royals. These days, he's taking care of famous movie stars and very rich business people. Do all the royals get this kind of protection? Well, you have the main royal family, the princes and princess and dukes. You've probably never heard of the princess Michael of Kent, the Queen's cousin-in-law. So you have those guys in all their families. Then you've got all the members of the House of Windsor, and there are lots of them. On top of that, you have a bunch of folks who are related to the royals, but they don't use what's called the royal style. Take for example Lady Sarah Frances Elizabeth Chado. So it's a big family, and no, they don't all have round-the-clock security. But you can bet they won't be seen getting some pie and chips at London Derby football games. The British tabloids in 2012 did say, however, that around 21 royals have tight security and that it was costing the British taxpayer around $130 million a year. The Mirror wrote 1,000 officers are being used to guard the royals in their homes around the clock. 16 properties around the country do have this round-the-clock security. You might not even have heard of some of the people with this security. It's said that each of these lesser-known royals will still have five highly trained officers around them all the time. As for those places the royals like to stay, such as Balmoral Castle in Scotland, they will have scores of officers and armed response personnel surrounding them when they're occupied. You can't just walk up to the door and ask if the princess is playing out. This includes the country cottage where you might find Prince William and Kate Middleton. And don't even think about rolling up to Kensington Palace and doing a belfie in the royal fish pond. What about when the princes join the army, such as Prince Harry? Was Harry protected or was he hanging out with the working class lads from Liverpool, Manchester, Leeds, etc.? Well, the royal loving tabloids would have you think the royals are as much at risk as any other soldier. But is that the case? Harry once told the Guardian, it's easy to forget who I am when I'm in the army. Everyone's wearing the same uniform and doing the same kind of thing. I get on well with the lads and I enjoy my job. It really is as simple as that. That said, his unit was the Household Cavalry's Blues and Royals, which is what you might call a special unit of senior officers. But of late they've been deployed to the Balkans, Iraq and Afghanistan. The unit does lose the odd soldier in action, and Harry did say in the past that he wanted to see action. The last thing I want to do is have my soldiers away to Iraq or wherever like that and for me to be held back home, he said. But in the end, he wasn't allowed to go on that occasion. Then he got his chance in 2008 when he was sent to the Helmand province of Afghanistan, but it was kept secret at the time. Years later, he was shooting at the Taliban and then flying Apache helicopters. It sounds like a con, but Harry is genuinely shaping up to be one of the best young Apache pilots this country has ever seen, said a military source. So there you go, maybe Harry is the least protected royal. There's always the chance he'll get hit by a bullet or his helicopter will go down. The royal family may need to be protected, but so does your personal or business website. 
Thankfully, Wix has your back with VIP technical support, a comprehensive troubleshooting database, and mobile hosting so your site is always available no matter the device. Click the link in the description or go to wix.com slash go slash infographics and start designing a website that's perfect for you and completely bug free. Would you like to be a royal? Is it a good life being followed around constantly or having to be protected? Let us know in the comments. Also, be sure to check out our other video, Are You Related to the Royal Family? Thanks for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.